para partisipan untuk menyalakan kamera uh, agar Profesor Jean Kollerhoff dapat melihat berapa banyak mahasiswa yang hadir. Nanti di saat uh, perkuliahan bisa di turn off lagi kameranya. We have four class, but unfortunately, sometimes uh, they have a not so good connection. So, uh, some student or many student don't attack the video. Okay. Unfortunately, okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. But anyway, they, anyway, they all we, have... we can inform it. They, they, uh, they all should have the powerpoint presentation maybe not now if they if you haven't got time but at least later yes also the the powerpoint should be shared to the students later after the lecture yes you can you can share okay. it with them okay. and oh I forgot to write my email address just in case they have questions, but they can also ask me directly today. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, I will translate it to the students. Yes, please do. Okay. Uh... Untuk mahasiswa bioteknologi pertanian, di akhir perkuliahan akan di-share uh, materi yang, yang disampaikan oleh Prof. Jin. Uh, kemudian nanti kalau ada yang ditanyakan, bisa ditanyakan langsung di kegiatan ini atau bisa melalui email. Terima kasih. It should be started or yes, I, I will for start. Five minutes. Uh, is, it should uh, be started. Is Afif, is Afif present or uh, is he blocking oh, no. the way? Yeah, the key uh, we, will be explained he's by uh, Professor yeah. Arifin Nur. No. He's, he's, he's in the rain. Yes. Yeah. 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 I will open the lecture today. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. I'm sorry, in Indonesia, it's already afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, we are delighted to welcome you to the International Guest Lecture 3 in 1 program with the title Plant Biotechnology a Modern Approach for Better Crops. Let me introduce myself. My name is Aziri Gautama Arifin, and I will be MC and moderator for today's lecture. Selamat siang, selamat datang di International Case Lecture 3 in 1 program yang bertemakan Plant Biotechnology, Modern Approach for Better Crops. Perkenalkan, nama saya Aziri Gautama Arifin. Saya bertugas sebagai MC dan moderator untuk kuliah tamu hari ini. The Excellency, the Head of Plant Biotechnology 3-in-1 Program, Professor Arifin Nur Sugiharto, Professor Jean Kollerhoff from University of Toulouse, Lecturer of Plant Biotechnology, and also the participants. Thank you very much for your coming on International Guest Lecture 3-in-1 Program. This lecture provides a great opportunity for students of plant biotechnology to learn theoretical knowledge and practice in plant biotechnology from the exceptional professor from abroad and practitioners who can contribute to the community's intellectual research in the course and international projections. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are going to listen to the opening speech delivered, to, delivered by the head of plant biotechnology three-in-one program, Professor Arifin Nur Sukiharto. And afterward, we would like to request the head to officially open today's lecture. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Arifin Muskia. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I heard of Plan Reading Laborate and on behalf of the coordinator of biotechnology lecture, 
from the Department of Agronomy took this opportunity to welcome to you all to the International Guest Lecture in the 3-in-1 program with the team of a modern approach for better crops. I welcome special guest distinguished Professor Jean Carl Hopp. She is a senior professor of biotechnology from the Toulouse University of French. So she was a professor of a former of prof, uh, she, she was a former of the professor from Dr. Afibuddin Latif. He is now secretary of department agronomy when he was getting PhD degree in France. Well, because of time difference, my warm greeting is special. Good morning, Prof. Jean Kalhoff. I shall inform you firstly that this event is very important, especially to our institutions uh, to facilitate very good experience in the international class for our students. So the audience standing this Zoom class are mainly the student from the biotech class, at least the tender is from four classes in the semester three. So since then, they still do not understand well about biotechnology in general, and maybe they still have big in English. So Prof. James, please kindly speak slowly and be patient to give this lecture. Prof. James, as usual, uh, in class lecture in Indonesia, 10 minutes before finishing class, you also please to give a short quiz for assessment. And of course, Gio will help you to, to arrange it. Well, uh, for all students or tenders here, Professor Jin will give class for time meeting from today. That is starting today, 10 November then continued in uh, 17th November and 22nd November, and the last is in 24th November. Today's topic, by the way, is genomic organizations in the eukaryotic and prokaryotic genome. Wish you enjoy very interesting lecture from the very expert professor. And all students, make sure that you will keep in your notes for the best learned from the Professor Jean. Good luck. Thank you back to CEO Moderator. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Professor Arifin. Uh, I will translate the points uh, from Professor Arifin to the students. Uh, kegiatan kuliah tamu 3-in-1 program bioteknologi pertanian ini mengundang Profesor Jean Kallerhoff dari Universitas Toulouse uh, dari Perancis. Hari ini beliau akan menyampaikan materi dengan tema organisasi bahan genetik dalam genom eukariot dan prokariot. Pemaparan materi akan dilaksanakan selama 60 menit dan dilanjutkan dengan sesi tanya jawab selama 20 menit. Dan kemungkinan nanti di akhir perkuliahan akan ada terus. Profesor Jean Kallerhoff juga akan memberikan materi kuliah tamu pada tanggal 17, 22, dan 24 November 2022. Jadi dimohon kepada para mahasiswa untuk mengikuti perkuliahan pada hari tersebut. Thank you. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Jean Kallerhoff. Thank you very much, my dear colleagues, for this absolutely praising introduction for me. Um, I visited your university, the UB, and I had the opportunity of 
meeting different professors from the plant breeding department and plant biotech and also some students and i have been most impressed by their opening the readily asked questions and this made me very happy so i had a most successful business trip when i was at the ub thank you very much to all those who hosted me now my dear students i don't know how many you are but professor afiduddin said that you were many 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 okay it's not very easy to have a distance learning call but i will try my best to make it as simple as possible should you not understand or have questions please do not hesitate to interrupt me and ask questions I'm a normal human being. <laughs> uh, don't let the term professor uh, be a hindrance to you. Just raise your hand and ask me the question. I will interrupt because there's nothing worse than having students not understanding. Right? For me, it's very frustrating. So if you help me, then I can help you. Okay? Is it a deal? Where are you all? Students? Deal. Good. Okay. So um, can you see my screen, all of you? Azari, can you ask them? Sudah uh, bisa melihat slide-nya. Okay. Um, all of you, can you understand me when I speak? Do I speak loud enough? I do. Yes. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you. So, my name is Jean. I am a professor at Toulouse INP NSAT. I met your professor Afiduddin uh, Latif in Toulouse while he was a student, a highly promising student. And there you go. This is where he landed at the UB and he is now on the upstairs escalator, right? So um, my expertise, I have been trained in plant molecular biology, plant biotechnology, um, functional genomics. And so what does functional genomics mean? This means you devise experiments to demonstrate the function of genes. If you have a candidate gene, suspected to be involved in plant uh, in resistance to a virus or a, a, a pathogen, then you devise experiments to show that this gene is really involved in the phenotype, that is in resistance. Okay? So, my research focus is on crop improvement using modern technologies, right? Biotechnologies. And um, I'm not only in the field of plant breeding, but also in the field of environmental sciences, where the molecular tools can also be 
applied to this area. Okay. So how are you doing, you students? Can you understand me? Say all yes or all no, all together, yes or no? Yes, mom. Oh, they are sleeping. Azeri, they are sleeping. Wake them up. Uh, tolong bagi mahasiswa untuk menjawab ya jika uh, Prof. Jin tanya. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. Right. Let's get into the business now. Oh, 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 oh. Voilà. So your professors requested that I make, give you some basic um approaches to molecular uh, biology and genetic engineering right so i understand that you are young bachelor students and i will try not to go very very um difficult things so what they requested is that i give you some main features of living cells, you will be absolutely amazed to see the power of living cells. And it will give you an insight. So an insight on how your... How your organism, your body works. Okay? This is the basis of uh of how we respond aha uh -huh, there's somebody who's speaking who wants to speak I'm sorry, I will mute. Okay, can I continue? Okay, so uh, we're going to speak about the main features of living cells so that you can see, you can understand, you can learn what, how living cells are. And then we will go into the structure and expression of the genes. Then we will go into, we will start molecular biology class by gene cloning technologies. And you know that in Indonesia, there are very, very, very powerful labs that develop technologies, especially in the field of health using these molecular technologies. So nowadays in the 21st century, you should be aware of these methods. And uh, the last session will be dedicated to detection methods using some more powerful and sensitive methods. Okay? Right. Ay -ay -ay. Ah, okay. Hmm. I'm, I, I am not a highly computer literate person. 
So, um, living cells. Living cells, we're going to talk about plants, animals, and microorganisms, such as, and focusing on bacteria, because these bacteria will be helpful to us for our gene cloning technologies. So, there is one aspect that you need to remember. Where do living cells get their needs to grow up, to develop? Right? So there are two possibilities. Either they make them, right? Or they take them from the outside. Okay? So that's two ways. And there are two mechanisms, two types of cells. And this is something that you need to remember for your future careers, right? Okay? You don't only learn for your examination at the end of the year or at the term. You need, you work, you remember for life. Okay? So the first aspect is autotrophy, right? So autotrophy is something that um, the cells are able to provide for their own needs. They are independent of the outside um, outside um, contributions. And the only examples are plant cells. So plant cells provide for their own needs. The second word that you need to remember is heterotrophy. This means that cells use organic matter coming from the outside and use them for their energy needs. So this concerns animal cells and non-photosynthetic cells. Okay? Photosynthesis. Does it ring a bell to you all? Not the professors, but the students. <laughs> Aha, uh -huh. so it will come, okay? Plants can make their own food. This is what it means, okay? Um, right. So now we are going to see the different, different types of living cells. The basic ones we will see are bacterial cells. They are part of the prokaryotic world. So prokaryotes. Oh, la, la. So prokaryotes are single cells, and we will talk about bacteria, right? And very, very simple thing. They've got one chromosome and they've got something different that is an extra chromosomal DNA. And that is called a plasmid. So all this is called a bacteria. Some bacteria have flagella, others have pilus, right but they all have a cell wall and you've got them in different shapes but we're not going to go into these details so the genetic information is in the chromosome and in the plasmid remember the plasmid the plasmid we will use it when we will do gene cloning okay so the genetic information carried by a chromosomal DNA that is loose in the bacterial cell, right? It is not confined within a structure that we call the nucleus. And we will see this in eukaryotic cells. And then there, there is this other thing called the plasmid. This is the plasmid DNA. And it 
can replicate, we call it replication. I gather that you know what replication is because you have learned this at college. But there again, you need to remember because most of the students, oh, we have forgotten, madame. It's so far away. No, no, you learn for life. Okay, having said this, right? Plasmids will be very important tools. Okay, now they are, oh dear, I don't know what to do with this. So they are very small bacterial cells, uh, roughly about two micrometers, between one to 10 micrometers. Okay, so voila. Can anybody help me to see, to show me how to get rid of this? Um, ah, that's it, okay. So we've seen prokaryotes, bacterial cells. Now we're going to see eukaryotes. Eukaryotes are higher organisms, plants and animals. I have given you a little cartoon, right? So that you can see what are the differences between a plant cell and an animal cell. Main features are that plant cells have a very, very rigid cell wall. You know why? Because plant cells are plants are immobile. They can't walk. Okay? So they can't walk. They can't defend themselves against winds, um, uh, animals. So therefore, they have to be very rigid, right? This cell wall protects them, right? And then they've got lots of organelles that help them get energy and synthesize their food. And this is called photosynthesis, mainly done by chloroplasts, okay? Animal cells, you can see they have no rigid structures. They have no cell wall but they have all these little organelles just as much as plant cells do, okay? So you must have learned this in former lectures, right? So, but I am giving you this so that you have a complete um, picture of what will you will have to expect you need to understand that the plant cells and animal cells or bacterial cells right they form the buildup of the machinery right and um, and and this is essential essential so now we've seen prokaryotes we've seen differences between plant and animal cells. Let us go a little bit more into uh, depth of eukaryotes. Eukaryotes, higher organisms, right? And these are made up of animals, plants, and yeast. All the yeast, uh, yeasts um, are, are microorganisms. They are eukaryotes. Okay, they are much bigger than bacterial cells. They go up to 100 micrometers and they have a nucleus. This is why they are called eukaryotes. The genetic material is in the nucleus. And because of their greater complexity, the gene expression, is highly different to that of prokaryotes. And we will see this during our lectures. So you need to remember the differences and the commonalities between plants and animal cells that you will have seen in the preceding slide, right? Presence of the membrane, 
the cytoplasm, the nucleus, the mitochondria is used for generating energy. The endoplasmic reticulum, oh, sorry, this term is in French. Endoplasmic reticulum is uh, responsible of protein synthesis. But you also need to understand and remember, of course, right? Of course, remember the differences between plant and animal cells. In plants, chloroplasts are present. Chloroplasts needed for photosynthesis. Cell wall for rigidity. There's a huge vacuole for stocking toxins and whatever. And in animals, these are absent. So these are important features that you need to understand because um, you are certainly going to specialize in plant sciences, but you also need to have a stand back and knowledge on microorganisms and animal cells, okay? Right, so how do I switch on sometimes? Ah, so now we are going to see the differences, right? And commonalities between animal and plant cells. You need to remember the function of all these organelles. They are called organelles because they are the entities that give us energy that make our proteins and that help us for our buildup. So all these are common in animals and plants. But in plants, specifically, you've got chloroplasts, site for photosynthesis, photosynthesis is that the plants will make organic matter. They will synthesize, right? And the vacuole, they will stop. There is a very, very little vacuole in animal cells, but it's insignificant. I've given you here the link where you can have um, insights into the pictures and go more into details. Right, something that, this is a scheme that will make you the difference between a prokaryote and a eukaryote cell. I don't have to go through this. The only thing that I will comment is histones because I'm not sure that you know what histones are. Uh, histones are basic proteins that are in the chromosome, right? So histones are present only in eukaryotic cells. Only in eukaryotic cells, right? There is a nucleolus, right? There is the endoplasmic reticulum, right? All these are present in eukaryotic cells. And chloroplasts are present only in plant cells and in green algae. Okay, so this is a little chart that will help and guide you. Remember the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Okay, and hopefully you can carry this along during your studies. So now let us go into insights about molecular biology and more so about the genetic material in prokaryotes and in eukaryotes. So we have seen prokaryotes, simple organisms, one cell, bacteria, right? And now we're going to see in eukaryotes, but both right? You need to have 
to remember that some definitions. These are words that you have all seen, the genome. But considering my long experience in teaching, right, I know that when I ask question, what is a genome? Oh, everybody, all the students say, oh, la, la, I don't know, pa, 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 and they say something hazy. No, there is a definition for the genome. It's the whole component of the genetic material, right? The genetic material is encompassed in what we call the genome. Now, the genome has got different components, right? Whether they are read, expressed or not, then this will give rise to a genotype, right? And the genotype will give you the phenotype, okay? So the phenotype corresponds to the color of your hair, the color of your eyes, whether you are uh, tall or short, and uh, whether you have uh, high adaptabilities for languages or, 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 or whether a plant is sensitive or resistant to a pathogen, a virus, to the wind or whatever, okay? So, and the chromosome, right, encompasses the whole of the genome, right? And it looks like fluffy ball of wool, right? And the chromosome contains the genetic material called DNA, associated with proteins, right? In eukaryotes, these are the histones, and right? And these is the basics, the backbone of the genetic information that will lead to a phenotype, right? That is the way you are, the way you work, the way the, the color of your skin, your hair and whatever. Okay, now the genetic information is in DNA. I know you have, you know this, with four bases, right? And there is an intermediate, very, very important molecule called RNA, the ribonucleic acid. Okay. Right. So the genome is consists of all the genetic material. And it is very different whether it's prokaryotic or eukaryotic. This is a very important slide, my dears, right? In prokaryotes, you have a chromosomic genome and an extra chromosomic genome, as we have seen in the cartoon, right? That's the chromosome, right? And in prokaryotes, no nucleus and the plasmid. In eukaryotes, this makes it a little bit more complex. Eukaryotes, animals, and plants. So in animals, you've got nuclear genome, mitochondrial genome, that's all. And in plant cells, have three genomes because there is the chloroplastic genome. As you go along in your studies, you will learn that chloroplastic genome is most important for plant breeding. Right. How does this, this, uh, this genome look like? In prokaryotes, right, there is no nucleus and all this 
is the DNA, the chromosomal DNA, the genome. It is in the cytoplasm and it is held up by a central protein. Okay, so you can understand that all this is highly entangled, right? It's like, uh, of course, now, especially in your countries, you're highly powerful with technologies. Uh, but when I was young, our telephones had threads and had wires and they wind up, right? And so it looks like um, spirals, okay? So, and these have the genes in here. So in order to express a gene, you need to disentangle, to loosen all these threads, right? So that's for prokaryotes. The cartoon, you can easily remember cartoons. More difficult to remember words and big sentences. In eukaryotes, that's another story, and you can see that it is highly, um, highly complex. So this is the simple structure, the double helix of DNA. So it, all our genetic information is encompassed in this. And of course, in eukaryotes, plants, animals, right? We have lots and lots and lots of information. So if we had to have all these information within one cell in the nucleus, it would take too much space. So nature is very powerful. It condenses. The DNA has been condensed around histone proteins, right? so that it makes it shorter, but while making it shorter, it has to be a little bit fatter, thicker. And so we go from a double helix, then it is called beads on a string because of these histone proteins, then the solenoid, and this structure winds up again in ellipses. So it condenses more and more because it has to fit in the nucleus, right? So the condensation of these ellipses and semi-ellipses make them get shorter and thicker until we get to the condensed chromosome called the metaphasic phasic chromosome. So you can see that we started with a two nanometer wide molecule, and we end up with a thousand four hundred nanometers, right? Shorter and thicker. Right now, I would just like to ask uh, the moderator if I am being heard correctly. Yes. Okay, good. Is it understandable? Yes, I think it's very clear. Okay, good. So now we are going to, so students, you need to fasten your seat belts now because it's going to be a little bit more difficult, right? And be attentive. And if you need to ask questions, you ask questions. Right. So we've seen the structure and presentation of this, the genetic material. Now we're going to go into the details of how they are, how they are organized, right? 
it's not just nice to see the structure. Yes, that's fine. But we need to, to see what they have. So we are going to start by bacterial genes. And I chose to show a most important region in bacterial um, genome. It's called the lactose operon. Now, what is an operon? An operon specifically is related to prokaryotic, the domain, okay? And a lactose is a sugar, right? Lactose is metabolized by the action of beta-galactosidase to galactose and glucose, right? And for this to be achieved, bacteria need an array of genes for this lactose to be metabolized. So each one of these genes, right, you've got three main genes, Z, Y, and A, all responsible for the metabolism of lactose into galactose and glucose. On top of these three genes, you've got regulatory regions called promoter, operator, and inducer, right? These are regulators, and these are functional genes. So for the lactose to be metabolized, you need these three genes, okay? So that's the first aspect to remember. It's very simple, right? And all this is called the lactose operon. Okay, so how does this work? How does this work? In bacteria, When a gene needs to be expressed, in fact, the operon is needed. And in this case, we speak about coupling of transcription to translation. This means that this promoter is a regulatory sequence that will initiate the transcription of these genes. And when transcription begins, translation will proceed. So all this is done in one stretch. And we speak about transcription is coupled to translation. Right. So this is a particularity of prokaryotic domain. In, in eukaryotes, this is getting a little bit difficult. How is, how are genes organized in eukaryotes. So in eukaryotes, we speak about one gene. One gene is made up of sequences that will be expressed and some that will not be expressed. So we have regulatory sequences of promoters that will initiate transcription. Now, um, the moderator, have they, do they know what a promoter is? Uh, I will ask, uh, yes. I think in the class they already heard about promoter. Before. Okay. 
So a promoter, students, is a stretch of nucleotide sequence that will be recognized by enzymes called polymerase and that will initiate the transcription of DNA into RNA. So it is always in front of the coding sequence, right? And then at the end, you have terminator sequences. It's like um, um, traffic lights. You've got green lights and you've got red lights. When it's green, this means you go. And when it's red, you stop. So in molecular biology, as you can say, it's very easy as well. Green, it will start and all this will be transcribed. When it reaches a terminator sequence, it will stop. The enzyme will go away and this will lead to something that will be called pre-messenger RNA made up of, you need to remember this, please, exons and introns, right? So the introns will be removed and all the exons will come together, right? And this will be the messenger RNA to which there will be a protein at the five prime end, right? And the terminator will be here. So the messenger RNA is capped. And here at the end, you will have a stretch of polyadenines. It is the polyadenylation site. Now, all this is in the nucleus, and this mature messenger RNA will migrate into the cytoplasm where this messenger will be translated into the functional protein or the structural protein. So as you can see that, so this is why in eukaryotes, we speak about monocystronic translation. There is only one gene that is read at a time. Okay. I can go on. Okay. So I have given you here the structure, the scheme of the messenger RNA, right? So that's the mature messenger RNA that is needed for reading the message. So it has this protein at the five prime end. It's a regulatory protein. Then you have a non-translated sequence upstream of the initiation codon. This is where protein translation will start. That's the coding sequence, followed by a stop sequence, the terminator, and the polyatase, right? So you need to remember this, even up to your master and to your PhD, if some of you are going to go into PhDs. So now I want to make a point on promoter sequences. All organisms have in their genes promoter sequences. As you can see, they are stretch of DNAs, both in prokaryotic and eukaryotic promoters, except that the eukaryotic promoters, it's a little bit more complex. But promoters have got conserved sequences, right? So this is a head of the coding area. It comes before so that this enzyme coding for the RNA polymerase can attach itself. It's like a recognition signal. So it attaches itself here, and once attached, it will start translating the coding area. 
The eukaryotic promoter is a little bit different, more complex, of course. It's got something called a cat box because there are sequences that are rich in CAAT. Then you've got a GC sequence and a Tata box because it is rich in T's and A's. And of course, all this is in front of the AUG start of the codon of the translation, initiation codon. So now we are going to see how these bacterial genes are expressed. And I, we are going to see, still stick to the lactose operon, because we will need this when we will talk about gene cloning. <clears throat> of course, all our genes are not expressed at the same time. Some are, we speak about turning on or switching on. This means then they are expressed to give a protein and some are repressed, they are not expressed. So in bacteria, bacteria need lactose. <clears throat> That's the sugar. So in the absence of lactose, right? So that's the lactose operon. And there are two important regulatory sequences. You've got an inducer that will code for a repressor. And this is the operator. So in the absence of lactose, this region called the Ig will code for a repressor. This repressor will fix to the operator and therefore there will be no transcription of these three genes. Because there is no lactose, our cells uh, um, need to work in an economy mode. If there's no lactose, these genes do not need to be expressed. Now, when there is lactose, if there is the sugar, the sugar needs to be degraded into galactose and glucose so that the bacteria can make energy and can divide. So therefore, in the presence of lactose, the repressor, which has that has a, a high affinity for the lactose, will bind to this sugar molecule, and the binding will prevent binding to the promoter, right? And therefore, this the three um, the three genes will be able to be expressed and therefore the beta galactosidase will be expressed and the lactose can be degraded into two galactose and glucose okay so this is one way that bacteria regulates gene expression by repressing or inducing. Now we're going to see a second example that is a little bit different. That is called the tryptophan operon. Now, tryptophan is essential for bacterial growth. If you don't have tryptophan in the medium, right? The bacteria will have to synthesize it. And therefore, it will need enzymes so that tryptophan can be synthesized. So it's different to the lactose operon. You need to work it out, right? Um, so as usual, you have a promoter sequence, right? And the start of transcription. So 
if you have tryptophan, if you don't have tryptophan in the medium, right? If you don't have tryptophan, the bacteria needs tryptophan. Therefore, it needs to synthesize the gene. If you do have tryptophan in the medium, then why should the genes have to work? Economy, right? So then the genes are switched off by an active repressive sequence. So that this enzyme cannot fix here and therefore the genes are not transcribed and translated, and therefore tryptophan will not be um, synthesized. Okay? So here, genes are on without tryptophan in the medium. Tryptophan will be synthesized. If tryptophan is present, then the enzymes will not be no needed, and therefore, economy of the cell, the genes are switched off. So that was in prokaryotes. What about eukaryotes now? In eukaryotes, as usual, it is more complex. There are different steps to regulate gene expression, whether it is switched on or off. There are 10 mechanisms, but I'm not going to go through all of them. I just chose the most simple ones, but you will learn about them, the others, at a later stage. So the first one is the chemical state of DNA. And there is one thing that is very important, is the methylation of DNA. If the DNA is methylated, the genes will not be expressed, and we speak about gene silencing. And the DNA can be modified, modified by different enzymes, right? phosphorylation, methylation, acetylation, amongst others, of histones, those basic proteins that get, that wind up along the DNA. And here are the histones, whether they are methylated, phosphorylated, or, or acetylated, there will be or not transcription, but methylation is associated with very low transcriptional activity. To go more into complexity, for genes to be expressed in eukaryotes, so this is the promoter, that's the enzyme getting fixed into the onto the promoters and that's the beginning of the coding sequence so the promoter is not the only only um, regulating agent there are sequences upstream of the promoter upstream within the same chromosome or there can be other regulatory sequences outside the chromosome so these these regulatory proteins can be on the same we speak about cis acting promoters or on different chromosomes we speak about trans Trans is on a different chromosome. So you can see that gene regulation in eukaryotes is very, very complex. But 
at the beginning of your bachelor's studies, this is enough for you to understand that it is a highly complex thing. So, I am reaching the end of my lecture now, and I am would like just like to summarize what I spoke about. It is important for you to understand what living cells are, right? Plants, animals, microorganisms, bacteria, and they form eukaryotes and prokaryotes, right? And in eukaryotes, you've got plants, plant cells, and animal cells, okay? These are the structural aspects. But of course, because eukaryotic cells are more complex, therefore, they will behave differently. And there are also different behaviors in plants and animal cells. And because of these specificities, there will be specificities in terms of functionality. Okay, so this is all what the lecture was about as introductory lecture, right? And um, you will need to understand, memorize the interrelation between the structural aspects and the functional aspects. And in order to help you to do this, we can do it now because we've got some 20 minutes left, right? I have listed some questions, right? To, for you to take home. And these take home questions will help you to fix these ideas in your mind. And once they are understood and they are fixed, that will be for life. Okay? So, can somebody define what a prokaryotic organism is? <laughs> so I have I will stop talking now. Some of the students will need to talk. Okay, there is one participant who raised hands. Please, Mr. Mr. Angada. Angada, welcome. Yeah. Uh, bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah the, uh, um, let me um, answering the questions. The prokaryotic cell it was um, the the monocellular. I mean, like bacteria and the uh, cell from the alga, and they don't have a lot of, a lot of the properties like the eukaryotic cell. Uh, they only have uh, maybe only uh, several or maybe few components um, in uh, uh, wait, wait, I mean um, I mean uh, the uh, the prokaryotic the cell is only have a few of the components from the um, from the eukaryotic cell only like that. Thanks. Yes, you're getting near it, but you need you will work on it at home, right? And you you will get more precision. You need to be very precise. Now, I believe I heard algae. You need to be very careful about algae because they are, it's very difficult algae because some are photosynthetic cells, some are not. So they are eukaryotes. Okay, um, so you need all of you, right, with the help of these questions, define prokaryotes, define eukaryotes, and your answer 
need to be swift, short, and smart, right? So prokaryotes do not have a nucleus, right? They are single cells, mostly bacteria, right? And the uh, no nucleus and uh, eukaryotes, their genome is encompassed within a nucleus and they have organelles, right? which prokaryotes do not have. So with the um, uh, with these questions, you can go back to the lectures and work them out. Right, define autotrophy and heterotrophy. That's the lecture, right? You need to understand. So main features of a bacterial cell, plasmid DNA, chromosomal DNA. The plasmid DNA replicates, replicates with, uh, autonomously. It does not need anything. It, it, has, it can replicate on its own, right? Um, the role of mitochondria and chloroplasts. Can somebody say, tell me what, what the mitochondria does? Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. And but Angada is a, is a professor, no? He's a student. Okay. So what is the role of a mitochondrion? It's my turn, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the mitochondria, um, the terms um, as uh, the powerhouse of the cell, they yes. will be productive efficient as proteins. You know about the transcription and the translations. Um, the mRNA having the code oh, and no, the codes no, 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 are no, no. The DNA. And then Mitoc the mitochondria may be um, productive with the proteins from the mRNA. Mitochondria will provide energy. But of course, it has this the its own um, genome, and therefore it will be expressed. Of course, but the uh, the 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 main role of mitochondria is to make energy ATP, and the chloroplasts. What is the role of the chloroplasts? Do you find this in animal cells? Uh, no. Exactly no, not. of course not. You only find them in plant cells because they are the site of photosynthesis. Okay, right. Of course, uh, I understand that you cannot give me the answers now to all these questions, right? Differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell, right? And how are prokaryotic and eukaryotic genes organized? So when you revise at home, it will be good for you to make to take one sheet of paper and put prokaryotic prokaryotes on the left, eukaryotes on the right, and then you make commonalities and differences. Okay, so operon dedicated only to prokaryotes, okay? Then we will go into gene expression, polycystronic and monocystronic, right? And these are very, very important um, aspects of basics of molecular biology because when you will learn about plant genetic transformation, you need to un have understood and got all these ideas very clear in your head, okay? 
So all these questions, you will find answers to them in the lecture, right? Um, most students uh, like to go onto the internet and read and read and read. So I take a lot of time to get things simplified and concise. So once you've understood the main aspects that your professors give you, then you can go and expand on internet, but don't do the reverse, okay? So important, I would like you, because we will use this for the gene cloning next week, right? I would like you to understand very clearly how the lactose operon works. How is it expressed? When is it repressed? And the same thing for tryptophan. Okay. So now we have got some 10 minutes for questions. And I will gladly welcome the questions, if any. No questions? Afif, are you here? Okay, there is one participant who raised uh, a hand to ask a question uh, yeah. from Muhammad Hanif at this. Yeah. Okay. okay. Please. Yes, Muhammad. I can't hear him. Mm -hmm. Muhammad? Uh, silakan Muhammad Hanif. Maybe, maybe um, he can write. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, I think you write his questions in the chat box. Ah, if the histones don't exist in prokaryotic cells, who provides the structural support to the chromosome? Yes, good question. Uh, it is, um, they wind up and there is a central protein that helps, keeps them together. There's a central, it's yellow in my, in my cartoon, right? And it helps them uh, get it close. And of course, prokaryotic chromosomes the, uh, doesn't have to uh, be that condensed because it is loose in the cytoplasm. It is not confined into the nucleus. So it is more relaxed than a eukaryotic chromosome. Did I answer your question? Did you understand my response? Okay. That was a nice question. Thank you, Mohammed. Okay, is there any other questions from the students? Uh, 
So okay. I will ask them as to uh, questions. Did you understand what I was saying or was it too quick? Azeri, can you ask them? Okay. Uh, was it too quick? Was it uh, too uh, difficult? Uh, let me have some feedback. Uh, baik, apakah penjelasan dari Prof. Jin ini jelas untuk kalian semua? Apakah terlalu cepat atau terlalu slow, lambat? Uh, mungkin kalian bisa memberi feedback. Silakan. Gimana? Apakah sudah jelas semuanya? The explanation is very clear, Oke, okay. terima kasih. Nah, yang lainnya bagaimana? Apakah sudah jelas atau masih belum jelas? Silakan send me a link. Thank you. Silakan send me a link. What is this link about? Please. Uh, it's a, a attendance form for the students. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So for the participant, please fill the attendance form uh, in the links in the chat box. Okay, good, 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 good. And no? Professor Jin, uh, about the take-home questions, is man is it mandatory for the students to um, send the answer of that of that questions to you? To Just, me? Yes, oh. maybe. Or oh, one hundred and seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe to the lecturers in University of Brabante. Uh, too many. <laughs> Yeah. Today attended 118. No, yes, yeah, because I gave this to them so that it would be a help for them to revise, okay? And to help to understand because so that they they have the the the, the basics. They know what they have to remember, okay? That's that's very difficult for students when they are not guided with um, questions. 117 times. I don't know how many questions I had. Maybe 15. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I will send it to uh, the answer to to the lecturers of yeah, but uh, university of course I, I would be i would be interested in having uh, in ha in seeing some of them right some of them say uh, choose at random 10 or 10 or 10 would be a good thing yeah. because for each lecture i will do the same thing this is a guidance for the students Yes. Uh, and are they going to have an examination? Mungkin Pak Afif bisa menjawab, Pak. Uh, you can send like in your slides, uh, Prof. Jin, and then we will do it. Here's directly to the students, right? So we, we will not do by online systems for the examinations, but they have to do directly here. But you can send us the task or the questions oh okay yeah, but exactly. um um Be because uh be because the online system that will do only the seminar seminar <clears throat> like this so your presentations uh, can be conducted by online but examinations they have to do directly offline yes on okay. site yes on site yeah and yeah, and do they do they all have the PowerPoint? 
Yes, uh, we have already shared your slides. Okay, mm. good. 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 Of so, course, the students, yeah. please, uh, some of you open your webcam, please, uh, because uh, Prof. Kalorov would like to see you. For example, Bima, please open your webcams, or maybe Muhammad Hanif, and uh, some of you. Yeah. So Hanif, uh, yeah, Bambang, maybe can, can you give some remarks or your your uh, feedback uh, concerning the presentations of Prof. Jeans, Angada, Muhammad Hanif, before we close this session. Uh, excuse me, can can you uh, hear my voice? Yes, yes. It is very clear. Yeah. Thank you for uh, Miss Jean Kalerho uh, for the lecture. The explanation is very clear and to the point. Thanks. Great. My pleasure. My yeah, pleasure. Very good, Jean. <laughs> it was clear and he said to the point. So it means. Uh, you give us uh, prices uh, information, yeah? like you said, as precise as possible, you ask to the students and you explain your slides uh, precisely. I, I, I think something like that information uh, by Hanif, right Hanif? Is that okay, my, my resume? Is that okay? Yes. Is it, your, it was your point, yeah, that you said to Prof. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, okay. okay, I understand that it could be a little bit uh, new or difficult, but my ideas, uh, you are at university and you are uh, there to learn new things and uh, things will get more and more complex, right, by and large, and uh, this is why you have got a challenging task because you will be the ones who will change the world. Not Maybe not the world, but at least Indonesia. <clears throat> and you have a lovely country. You have lots of resources to preserve, be they terrestrial or aquatic. So you will be actors of your country and hopefully the world. Don't forget that you have got golden opportunities in working on the international sphere. But then of course, for this, it would be better for you to have a PhD like professor, your professors have. Et voila. If you have no other question. Then I'm sorry, can, can I share? Oh, yes. Can I share the announcement about previous that you uh, something that you said before with Mr. Afif to the student? about the slide, the PPT and the take home questions. Okay, uh, untuk uh, para mahasiswa bioteknologi pertanian, uh, di chat box ada PPT yang telah di-share oleh Prof. Jin. Kemudian uh, dimohon untuk mengisi uh, tugas yang telah ditayangkan di slide sebelumnya, kemudian dikirim di links uh, di, yang dikirimkan oleh Mas Ardian Chandra. Terima kasih. Jika ada pertanyaan, uh, silakan ditulis di chat box atau raise hand. Thank you. I think the time is over. Uh, 
Bu Azeri. Oke, okay, I will right? close the yeah. lecture. Oke, okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have had productive and inspiring time together and this lecture about to come to the very end. I hope you have found the lecture on these three in one program are informative. Thank you very much. Till we meet again, may all of you have a great day. Uh, sorry, Bu Aziri, maybe yes? if, uh, Prof. Jin, uh, you will have uh, some closing statement before we close this first sessions, yeah, before you will come again in the next sessions. I don't know next. if you have some little information. No? Uh, okay, that's all? Yeah, yeah. I, I would like to have uh, uh, just uh, um, a cover sort of final conversation with only the professors, right? So that I can know what to prepare. I can improve my pre presentation for next week. Okay. It is noted. Okay, Buaziri, we give back to you. Okay. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, I think I have closed the class. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, see you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Prof. Jane. Thank you, thank you Prof. Jane. This is yeah. very nice uh, lecture, I think. But I'm so sorry because my speaker is not so good. So they have very hardly to listen your voice. But I actually, at the point, I can catch your lecture. So okay. your explain, yeah, I agree. I do agree that your explanation in, in the lecture is uh, simple enough. And PowerPoint is also simple. So. A little bit problem, I think, is in the language for our student. It's still, some term is uh, very, uh, I mean, still uh, strange. So they do not know the term, something like like uh, promoted. And but you you uh, have already gave, uh, I mean, what I say, glossary like this. So it, okay. I think it's okay. Yeah. Okay, I will I will try and make it clearer um, because I will use the promote promoters. We use them all the time, so I will make it clear. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Jean, one 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 again. Uh, you have it. It's all. That's all, Prof. Arifins? Yes, I think uh, that's okay. Yeah. No, Prof. Jean, uh, Prof. Arifins, sorry. Uh, several students asked me to to hear the conversation little in France uh, with you, Jean. Because they want to know <laughs> French, yeah. French language. Bon, ça, ça veut dire ils ils voulaient ils veulent de d'entendre un petit peu la langue française. Bon, bon, c'est juste pour pour dire uh, pour vous remercier. Hein, C'était très bien. D'accord. Ben merci. Ça me fait plaisir. Oui, oui. Et donc, uh, euh, je pourrais. I, I will I will send you No, it's bon ils veulent entendre la langue française un petit peu hein. D'accord. Bah écoute c'est à la fin c'est après. D'accord. Ben je vais le faire. Je vais le faire. Oui oui, ça, ça, voilà, ça, ça veut dire après euh, là c'est fini oui. là, maintenant c'est fini là, c'est deux minutes, ils veulent savoir si vous parlez français quoi. Bon, c'est pour ça que je je vous dis en français. D'accord. Je dis en français. Bien. Voilà. Oui, mais je vais le faire alors la semaine prochaine. Et um, qu'est-ce que je voulais dire encore? Uh, and the English is not too fast? Non, non, it, it was very uh, clear. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Ah, Perfect. Understand that. Thank you very much. Thanks yeah, very much. Merci. 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 Because you are, what is your uh, field of lecturing? What do you lecture? Tissue culture? Uh, we all like uh, deliver the plant biotechnology in general. And there is also tissue culture and uh, also DNA genomes like that. Okay. 
So because uh, Afif, I did not, and, and Arifin, I did not see any um, plant genetic transformation in the syllabus. Don't they have? Yes. Yes. We have? Yeah, ah. but this is not so intense because we will give in the master degree specifically. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Right. And I I have understood. So. For the gene cloning, I will do it in bacteria, okay? Yes. Yeah. With the, the prospect of uh, producing a recombination, um, recombination proteins in bacteria. Yes. Is it okay? okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay, you're welcome. See you next time. See you. See, See you time. next week. Next time and have a nice yeah. weekend. Have a nice, have a nice weekend. Bye. See you. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you, Pafi. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Merci beaucoup. Hein. Je t'en prie, Pafi. Voilà, je ne sais pas quitter la réunion. Quitter la réunion. Bon, euh, je pense que c'est. Euh, euh, en, en dessous, là, à droite, en dessous, à droite. Ouais, il, y a, que... il y a sortir ou lif, normalement. Au bout, au bout, à droite. Votre droite, hein, en bas. Oui. Mm -hmm. ah. Sur l'écran, sur l'écran, en bas, au bout, à droite. Eh bien, euh, oui, 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 ben, je sais, en bout, à droite, euh, mais... <rire> non, non, c'est marqué LIF, hein, normalement, LIF ou oui. sortir. Arrêter la vidéo. Oui, arrêter. Euh... Paramètres, oh là là, ça fait ça. Ah, voilà, enfin, ok. Bon à la réunion pour tous. Mais moi, je ne suis pas administrateur. Hein. Je fais quitter la réunion. OK, voilà, voilà c'est ça. Bon. Allez, allez, au revoir. Bon appétit, au revoir. Merci.